Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I am kind of into themes, like just a little bit. So I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to get this video out in the appropriate month. This is going to be my first time ever taking a deep dive into earth, wind, and fire. I know I have heard them in passing before, but I've never really done any analysis. So I am ready and hopeful to be totally delighted. Let's get to it. Ooh. This was such a cool intro that built hype in such a clever way. There are multiple things going on here. I want to point all of them out, um, but I'm going to play it again all the way through first and then go back. See if you can already pick out how it's building up that hype. Okay, uh, one of the first things that's uh, very useful for building hype is just growing in dynamics, right? Meaning getting louder as we're going along. I love the way that the sound is filled out. And not only does it go to be bigger, it also is filling out the different frequencies. So we have highs that it's starting out with. It's actually a little, um, like a little bit bare, sort of a little bit thin in the sound texture at the very beginning. And that uh, that sound texture doesn't have much bottom to it yet. We get a kick in partway through that starts to establish a bottom, but it leaves lots of space between that kick to build even more anticipation. And then we get this big sound with all of these instruments coming in, especially the brass. The brass are always very exciting to me. Uh, there was one other thing that was fascinating to me. Uh, there's, uh, there is one instrument that's almost just I think repetitively hitting the same pitch in the top. There's a lot going on, of course. And I actually had a sensation the first time of it speeding up just a tiny bit in the tempo. That might have been just a perception that was, you know, sort of askew. I'm not sure now because the second time I was like, is that really speeding up just a tiny bit? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm gonna listen to it again. You bet. There's like a guitar that's hanging out on that same pitch, builds a lot of anticipation on top. And there's that kick that came in, starting to give us some bottom, but it all builds really fast. Oh, it does feel like it speeds up there, just a little bit. Do you and that makes a lot of sense because this is, this is the official music video, but it is taking the studio track. And even though it's a studio track, today we tend to, do a lot of things in production according to a click track. So we keep everything on the grid is what we'll sometimes call it. We keep it on the grid and it's very much rigid in that tempo. Music has not been that way for the last 400 years. This is a very recent thing, okay? <laughs> this is very, very recent. Music could ebb and flow according to excitement and even people who have immaculate timing if their heartbeat goes faster, that can make that timing just a tiny bit faster as well. So in this earlier time, what was this? I think, I think this is 70s or 60s. They're formed in 1969. And I think this is one of their big hits, probably in the 70s. I don't remember the exact release date. And at that point, we weren't doing things always according to the grid in that production studio. So as the music builds, it would be very natural for the tempo to go just slightly faster. <laughs> that dancing is smooth. <laughs> Ooh. 
That high voice in there is like, it's almost, it feels almost lighter than is real. It's so, it, that there's so much ease in the falsetto. So I know that we have two main singers here. I was reading a little bit about the band. We have Maurice White, uh, who does lead vocals and percussion. <laughs> and then you have Philip Bailey, who does lead vocals and congas. And I think Maurice is our lower voice here and Philip is our higher voice. Tell me if I'm getting into this messed up, okay? Because I, like I said, first time ever doing a deep dive, I, like I, I had no idea what these people looked like before just a few minutes ago. Uh, there were so many great things about Maurice's voice that I want to talk about. So let's go back. Do you remember when like, first of all, I just think his endings are so engaging. <laughs> it's not remember and just holding it out it's like remember it gives extra ending or extra energy to that ending it grabs you and you're like wait a second there's silence i i needed more of that voice right afterwards <laughs> i really he has so many different endings that i think he's given extra energy to and he chooses dif to differentiate them in style as well Do you remember? it's also so freaking smooth <laughs> Like that, that's a really good example of grabbing us with more energy into the ending. Oh, the phrasing of this is interesting too. Ooh. So, a lot of times phrasing will follow this sort of, what I'll sometimes describe as like a square construction in music where you'll have a series of four, usually like four beats in a measure. And uh, you go one, two, three, four. And in that time, you would say some sort of sentence, or maybe you'll even put two groupings of four, or maybe even four groupings of four together in one big long phrase if you're an opera singer. Um, in his case, what he's doing the very first phrase was very short, and then he's actually starting his next phrase and bridging between these groupings of four. So he carries over, and instead of starting a phrase on the downbeat, he's often linking the middle of a measure to the middle of a next measure. Uh, I'll see if I can count so you guys can get a sense of where his phrases are starting and ending within that series of four. Oops, back. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. I think that is just such clever construction. It brings a lot of emphasis to all of these different words that he's saying, but he does it so smoothly, I didn't notice it the first time I heard it. Really, really awesome. Let's go back one more time and then I'll let it keep rolling. And he brings a lot more body into the sound here, a little more TA engagement to bring a little more power. Ooh. And I love the way that in that handing off to a higher voice, he actually goes lower to bring more contrast into this idea of like, oh yeah, handing it off way up here, but I'm gonna end up down here. So cool. Is that more?
more band members that are all singing up there in their falsetto. It sounds so easy to me. Like, this is ideal, breezy falsetto. I, I'm, Philip, I believe, is the person that's supposed to take the leads in the high, but it sounds like we have backing vocals in here as well, just from lots of people. It might just be lots of doubling on the track, but we also see the whole band coming up there. Uh, whatever it is, if that's all of them singing in their falsetto, heck, yeah, that is some good vocal training. I like that doubling of the octave. This is really fun. Shout out to a couple of things here. First, that's a really catchy badu badu part. It's just like it's catchy and fun and it makes me happy. So yay for happy music. Love that. Second thing, wow, the mix. It is really hard to work with horns and voices. Horns are loud. Anytime that you have the brass section enter in an opera, like you have to be really careful as a conductor right, to kind of keep it down because if you've got a singer bellowing up stage and those horns enter, those horns are going to drown out the singer hardcore. In fact, as opera singers are going through training and, and learning different roles, they tend to move into more horn heavy repertoire later in their career because it requires a lot more endurance and volume to just get that projection of the voice out beyond the horns. Uh, so in this case, luckily we're in a studio setting and we can balance those things a little bit better. I think it's amazing to hear this peppering of the brass there, not overwhelming even these high breezy light vocals. There. It's, it's kept so light. <laughs> he reminds me of this like legendary person I got to work with for a while in California. Shout out to Pops Dobson over at 1500 Sound Academy. Um, I I loved getting to just essentially apprentice under him and and learn some about funk, Motown, R&B, a little bit, you know, like learn some about the style. And this is so based on confidence. There's, oh man, it was so cool to hear Pops break out into song. Just the way he oozes confidence in every single moment is amazing. And I love the way that I could see him impart that to students. It's one of the things I strive to do with my teaching now, impart confidence. Voice is so closely tied to our mental state. So uh, there's even research talking about how healthy singers tend to be happier singers. There's just, there's a really important link between your voice and your mind. So if you can boost yourself up from the inside and let confidence start to take seed and bloom, that will come into your voice as well. I think it's so important that a voice teacher is able to help nourish not just the technique, but the full person. And I love seeing how Pops did that for his students. Right, there's so much ease in it. Ooh. That's been my favorite ending so far. And I know I cut him off on a part that sounded really cool, but I still want to go back and catch it one more time. Yeah, um, I am. I am into his delivery so much. I love the way that 
it's gone from not just um like more subtle uh toss off endings that were very energized still to this like outburst of extra energy that can't be expressed in any other way beyond song like song is the maximum human expression i love it <laughs> it makes me super happy to listen to it who else is feeling super happy just from listening to this isn't that amazing like isn't it incredible what music and awesome singing can do i love it <laughs> I love that slide at the end too. He's like so beyond this point of worrying about how his vocal te technique is gonna hold up his singing. All he's doing is just letting the emotion flow out in the voice. It's beautiful. You know what? We're just gonna we're gonna go back one more time because this is good for us, y'all. <laughs> This is going on my happy playlist. <laughs> that part I recognize. I know I've heard that in passing somewhere before. Um, I wouldn't have guessed, I think this is all guys singing. I wouldn't have guessed that, right? It's sort of remarkable how when guys are in the falsetto, they take on a, a quality. Some people describe it as feminine. I just think it's like lighter singing on the vocal folds. And uh, yeah, it's really fun to see who is behind these sounds. Also, I, you guys are gonna laugh, but I didn't, I, I'd heard of the band Earth, Wind, and Fire, but had never put them with that tune in there, right? Uh, it's important to link things so you understand how history, music history works together. And I just have been missing a lot of links. So when I heard Earth, Wind and Fire, I was like, is that like a hippies band from the 70s? You know, there's something that felt very earthy, right? Natural about it. I wouldn't have thought, oh, what, do I call this like soul disco? <laughs> I wouldn't have ever put those two together as that being the sound of Earth, Wind and Fire. So I love the way that Getting to do this deep dive right now just helps me <laughs> correctly maybe knit some ideas together. There is a counter melody in there that is awesome. Awesome. I like the way that they've put the two things together too. That one. That's so good. And speaking of phrasing, this counter melody is always starting on the downbeat. You can see if you want to go back and compare it on your own, I really highly recommend doing that. And notice how the feel is different between this counter melody that really feels like a hook, how that's different from the phrasing we were getting from Maurice at the beginning. It, it feels very, very different. And until you can compare the two things, you might not really notice them, but you actually have an amazing comparison in just this one song. It's super cool. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What was that high note there? I'm gonna come back here because I wanna hear, <laughs> there are a lot of layers that started going on there. I wanna hear them again. I like the way that they basically took that whole chorus and then moved it up a step there at the end. So we got a really nice high note that's gonna drive us 
through the rest of the song, I think. Let's keep going. That was a fun sound. Yow. Yow. It's like, it's almost cat like. <laughs> Yow. Yow. I just realized I have no idea what they're saying in the chorus. <laughs> I'm like, it feels happy. I, for me, the most important part of the music is really. The part that I tap into often first is the the vibe. I some people ask, you know, do you hear lyrics or or the music first? I always, I'm always hearing that music and the vibe, and I'll hear a technique of how things are even enunciated before I'll put lyrics all together. So good thing we've got some lyrics over here to the side. Um, let's see if I can figure out what they say now. Uh, yeah, let's let's go back. Say, do you remember dancing in September? Never was a cloudy day. Oh, I like that idea. Except for I really like monsoons in Arizona. Those kinds of clouds are very much welcome with the rain to help beat the summer heat. Let's go back. Meow. <laughs> This is this is why I can't really there it's mostly body yada yada yada. And then we it like has words inserted. So I think my brain has already turned off the idea that there are words there because it's body yada yada. I've turned that into a verb just now. And then we have that moment afterwards of like, hey, it was wonderful. Remember September? It was gorgeous. It does tend to be a gorgeous month across the world. Let's keep going. <laughs> the up feel here and that high note over and over the high note yeah get it at this point the song feels like it is just it has built up so much energy. The only possible route forward is much dancing. Much dancing, much continued singing, much rocking out to these really, really awesome hooks. There's like lots of them in here. <sighs> it makes it wanna go on forever and ever. I love that punctuation from the brass there. Oh, fade out. Gives you the idea that maybe it could continue forever in your mind. What a wonderful way to start our day. I hope that wherever you're at today, this has brought some uplifting vibes into your soul. I hope it's a wonderful day. I hope you continue to listen to music and be inspired to just make the most of life. And if you want some more uplifting feels and analysis, check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.